All right, welcome back to Parsha Review. Yeah, to the noisy group. Uh, this is Parsha's Teruma. Teruma is the seventh portion in the book of Exodus and is the 19th portion in the Torah. And there are 96 verses, 1,145 words, 4,602 letters. Why is it important? Because there's no extra letter in the Torah. There is no extra letter in the Torah. Very good. There are three mitzvahs in this week's parsha: Two performative mitzvot and one prohibited mitzvah. All right. One mitzvah that you have something you're not allowed to do. And the general summary of what is going on in this week's parsha, or actually in the coming five portions, is the building of the tabernacle. So that is between Teruma, if you see on the top of the third row, Teruma through Pekude. And then we have Moses gets the instructions, which is just this week's portion and next week's portion, which is Teruma and Tetzave. And in this week's portion only, we talk about the structure and the vessels of the tabernacle. We don't talk about the garments yet. The garments is next week. But this week is about, is, is, that's Tetzave. Teruma is about structure and vessels. Okay, so the Jewish pe people receive a series of laws. Cons oh, no, no, this is that's a carryover from Mishpatim. I'm sorry. Okay, so Hashem commands Moshe, number one, to build a Mishkan, a sanctuary with detailed instructions. And where basically Moses gets the blueprint. What is the purpose of the blueprint? What does a blueprint tell you? What, what you have to do. Well, the, the first thing it tells you is that someone planned this out. Right. Okay, there's a plan. There, it's part of something that's like, you know, someone's vision. They have an idea over here. It's going to be the steer well. Over here is going to be, you know, it, that's what the first thing it tells you. And what we see with the planning of the tabernacle is that it is a, what we see here, it's the microcosm of the universe. Sages tell us that the temple represented, with things that went on in the temple, represents the universe. The universe also has a plan. There's also a blueprint. Do you know what the blueprint is for the world, for the universe? The Torah. The Torah is the blueprint. The Torah is the plan. That's exactly what God had in mind. God wants the world. And we're going to be talking about this next week's Musar Mondays. You're just going to get a sneak preview here. Musar Masterclass next Monday. We're going to be talking about the trade of Emunah. Mm -hmm. right? And what is Emunah? Everyone says to believe in Hashem or to have faith in God. Wrong. Emunah means knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. We're obligated to, we don't see anywhere that it says that you should believe. Because believe is a very tricky word. Mm -hmm. Is believe, What's stronger, belief or knowledge? Knowledge. Right? I believe he'll come through on his promise. Or I know he's going to come through on his promise. Knowledge of God is the commandment we have in the Torah. The Torah commands us multiple times to know Hashem. The Torah does not command us to believe in Hashem. Because belief, come, that, that whole terminology of faith and belief is comes from really from Christianity. is because that's what they invented this idea of having a leap of faith. Take the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. where We have no idea if it's gonna if it's really true. If there is a God or is a God, we're going to take a leap of faith. We, we're going to... We, we're gonna, Make that assumption, and we're going to live with that assumption without asking any questions. In Judaism, that's called insanity. <laughs> right? It's called absolute insanity. We need to know, right? And what every Jew does is ask questions, right? It's a joke that everyone's been right? Jews are always asking questions. Why? Because we're, because we're on a mission. We're on a mission to know facts. We want to know. And without asking questions, you'll never get there. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, that's the microcosm of this world. The Mishkan had a blueprint where God had a plan of exactly where everything goes. The tabernacle is God's dwelling place in our midst while traveling through the desert. And then became the dwelling place of God in our midst in the land of Israel. The temple, the kotel, that we're very familiar with, we've all heard of the Western Wall, 
or the Dome of the Rock, or the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What, what is that? Well, the Western Wall is the last remaining wall of the original temple built by King Solomon, designed by King David. Is it the first or the second the wall? I think that wall was the same wall. The first, it, it, was it from the second? I think it's from the first. It was the same wall. Solomon built the first temple. He built the first one. Herod built the second. Right. Yes. And you know, does anybody know how they cut the stones? Yeah, the Shamir. What? You know too much information. The Shamir is a, the sh the Shamir is a worm that exudes an acid. And they would put it on the stone, and it would follow the line that they had drawn on the stone, and it, like a snail, leaving a, a snail trail, and that would cut the stone. Hmm. You're not allowed to use any metal on the Temple Mount. No guns, no swords, nothing. <laughs> and especially no hammers and no uh, picks or anything like that. Chisels. chisels, no chisels, yeah. And yet, it seems almost... Sometimes I it, 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 it seems sometimes uh, contradictory because you think in the temple there was a lot of slaughtering going on. Mm -hmm. The Sanhedrin, aside for the animals that were brought as offerings, mm -hmm. right? the Sanhedrin met in the temple, mm -hmm. in the courtyard, which we're going to talk about the courtyard. But that's where they met. That's where all judgment was ruled. So they didn't and execute yet, the judgment there. that's true, they didn't execute the judgment there, but still... It was a place where it's called Beiti Shalom, my house of peace. My house of peace. Really a remarkable. I mean, I'm sure there's so much we can talk about. Do we have the book? Or I think every year I ask the question. I have to just go buy it. But there was a book here. I think we lost it in the in the Great Flood. <laughs> where was it? The Great Flood of, 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 of Houston. 2000 something. Of 2016. Yeah. 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 What was the book? Uh, it was a book about the tabernacle. Beautiful, beautiful well, illustration. We used to show it a lot, right? Um, the um, It's a book of the tabernacle. I'm, I'm sure we don't have it because I would have had it in my hand already. It's usually down here in this shelf right here. Well, so, down here to your oh, okay. T terrific. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So we have a... We have a... Um, God's presence, okay, so the, the Western Wall. The Western Wall, why is it such a holy place for the Jewish people? Because that's the actual original wall. It's the original wall that was actually built by King Solomon. And the, I mean, if you look at those stones, if you've ever been there and you've touched those stones, those stones are like, holy. well, it's not only holy, they're enormous. How did they move them? They didn't have cranes. God says he doesn't want because metal is a is a weapon. Okay. Metal is a weapon. And God doesn't want weaponry in his place of peace. Mm -hmm. Right? It's almost a contradiction in my own little world here because okay, we'll talk about this offline. It's being recorded. Okay, and not everyone's from Texas. Yeah. So okay. So it's so we <laughs> It's a pity. It's a pity. Not according to my <laughs> okay. So the temple, the temple was a a a, blue, a a microcosm of the universe. What does that mean? That means that there was it. It had its own laws of nature that happened in the te in the temple. There were its own laws that didn't follow any laws from this planet. Yep. For example, there was a cloud of smoke that went straight from the altar to the heavens. And no matter what wind was blowing from what direction, that pillar of smoke was straight up to the heavens. What happens when you see, has anyone here ever been to a slaughterhouse, to a butchery, to a, right? Well, I saw a slaughterhouse. Oh, that's right. I know. <laughs> So, but so one of the things it's the it's first is it smells it smells awful. Yeah. Not only it smells awful, there are flies yeah. everywhere. Yeah. 
not in the temple. It didn't smell. And there were no flies. And the fire was never extinguished. Fire usually burns out eventually. I, I put a log in my fireplace. Eventually it goes out. No, not on the temple. The temple? Yeah. It's, you know, sprinkling the blood. Yeah. It, it's, it's It really is amazing. So it didn't abide by the regular laws of nature. They say, and you can listen to Rabbi Yaakov all these podcasts on this, but they say that that is the exact center of the universe. Mm-hmm. It just so happens to be that if you look at any map of the world and you put your finger right in the middle, right in the middle of it, it'll hit Israel. It'll hit Jerusalem. It's the center of the universe. So according to uh, our sages, the the point from which the entire creation came into existence was there. And all the prayers that we pray, we always pray towards Jerusalem. We pray towards the east. And what happens there? Well, our sages tell us that the prayer travels all the way to Jerusalem and from the Temple Mount up to the heavens. That's the gateway. Kizer Shar Shamayim. Because this is the gateway to the heavens. Very, very amazing. Okay. The Jewish people are asked to contribute precious metals and stones, fabrics, skins, oils, and spices. You know what happened? This is the first fundraiser ever <laughs> in the history of the world. One second, one second. Not only the first fundraiser. There were plenty of fundraisers before that. But the first fundraiser ever where Moshe says, no mas. No more donations. Stop. Stop. Stop giving donations. Just to give everyone a a, 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 uh, a preview of this, uh, you know, the torch doesn't do any fundraisers during the year because we want to be teaching Torah 365 days of the year. But in two weeks, that's when we have our fundraiser. So save up. Save up all your allowance till then. Okay. In two weeks. The week of the 13th. The week of the 13th. And give to you early and you hold it. I can, I definitely. I, oh, there we go. So I, I can I can do compounding interest on it. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to get to a point where I tell you, say, people, stop, stop with the donation, stop. Right? The second organization in the history of the world. The first was the Mishkan, the tabernacle, and the second is torch. Okay. In the Mishkan's outer courtyard, there was an altar for the burnt offerings and the laver for washing. So that was in the courtyard. The tent of meeting is divided by a curtain into two chambers. There was the outer chamber, and then there was the innermost chamber. The outer chamber is accessible only to the Kohanim, the descendants of Aaron. In it was the table of showbread, the menorah, and the golden altar of incense. Were women allowed in Mishkan? No. Neither was I. Only Israelites are not either allowed there. Was the courtyard considered the, the, the courtyard? The, there was a women, a very large women section there, and there was a very large Yisrael, right? For the Israelites who are non Levites and non Kohen, they had a, se- a courtyard which was actually smaller than the women's section. So the only people allowed there were Levites and Kohen. Yeah, the Levites weren't even allowed into the into the inner courtyard. Or even in, in the we call it the outer chamber, and then the inner chamber, the innermost chamber, was really the holy of holies, which that was only one person, one time, of the year. So we had the showbread, the menorah, the the golden altar of incense. Now, what was this golden golden altar of incense? I'll tell you a quick story. So I, um, I came for an interview to my previous job, my job before moving to Houston and joining Torch, I was I was in a job in Connecticut, Bridgeport, Bridgeport Fairfield, Connecticut. And I remember when I came on my interview, I came, um, oh, this is crazy, but I get to this yeshiva, which was, good. no, so I get to this synagogue that is soon going to be housing the yeshiva. 
they rented out a couple of the rooms for the yeshiva. There's going to be 30, 40 guys in the yeshiva. And I was going to be the outreach wing of the yeshiva dealing with the community, nothing to do with the direct operation. So I come to see the building. It's, it's nice. It's a nice synagogue. It's a nice building. But I walk into the social hall. And there's this priest there doing ha ha la la ha la la with the whole an incense with an incense burner. I'm like, what in the world is going on here? So the synagogue was having financial troubles, so they rented it out to a church, and the church was doing services in their thing. I'm like, are you guys crazy? Right? Either way. Huh? I don't know, but I remember I was I was holding my nose. I'm like, I don't want to smell no <laughs> idolatry incense. No. I don't, you know. But where does that come from? It comes from the Torah. It comes from directed from the Torah. The All right. Incense. Yeah. So so why people, idolatry? Because they're because doing it for them. they're doing it for their idol, for their deity, no. okay. for the Jewish boy. You know. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Entrance to the innermost chamber. The Holy of Holies was permitted only for the Kohen Gadol and only once a year on Yom Kippur. In it was the Ark that held the Ten Commandments inscribed on the two tablets of stone which Hashem gave to the Jewish nation on Mount Sinai, right? What was that? That was the broken tablets. The broken tablets. What else? The shards, the extras. Really, I think this is actually a mistake. I, I, don't, so think, I, think, I don't think it was that. I think the shards is what was what was taken by Moshe, that was his yeah. gift, and those were the, the the sapphire. Okay, so this is a mistake. I apologize. Cross it off. I thought the shards were kept in a second ark. Oh, I, no, I the shards is what I God gave. The shards is what God gave Moshe because Moshe, when all the Jews took the spoils of Egypt, he took nothing. He, he took nothing. nothing. He was busy collecting the bones of of, of, of Joseph. And 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 collecting the wood, the 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 sheetim wood that was going to be need need to be used for the building of this tabernacle. Right. He was getting all that wood now. He didn't have time to take the uh, Rolex from the Egyptian guy, right? So what did he, so what did he do? He got paid back with the sapphire of the second set of tablets, and he chiseled them out. God says, "You see all those pieces there? That's for you." And it turns out that Midrash says it was worth much more. Then so it was worth much more than what any of the Jews got from the Egyptians. Now, I, I I remember reading what you just said, and that he got it's this. a great lesson. Do the right thing. Just do the right thing. Do the right thing. You'll never lose out by doing the right thing. Yes. I remember reading that that he got the, the what was left over from the carving out of the second set of, of tablets, but I I could be wrong. I'm sure there's someone who has superior knowledge to me. But the, the first set that was broken was carried in a second around the code. That's not what I read. That's not what you read? No. Rabbi, were the pieces of the broken tablets from... Yes, the, yes, from the first one. They were in there, right. So that we have there, right? That's the pieces of it, right? That's the first thing. The second was an actual Torah scroll. It was an actual Torah scroll. Oh, there was a portion of mana that was in there. That's right. Okay, I forgot to add that. What about portion. your staff? I, I don't recall. I'll have to look it up. No, I think I remember the Aaron staff that bloomed. Okay, I, I don't know. I will look into it. Okay. And then all of the utensils and vessels, as well as the instructions for the construction of the Mishkan, are described in great detail. Exactly how, uh, you know, how, how, how wide and how long and how tall and how deep everything the design of structure of vessels the ark the cover the table the to the menorah the walls the partitions the altar and the courtyard are all described in this six-star portion yes so explain to me when you, why they go into great detail here and other stuff like put on the film they don't tell you how why and all this and they do the they go into such a great deal about building the Mishkan and the sacrifices, all that stuff. And but, the cult and the right. adults. And, 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 and the stuff that we do every day, you have to go to, they, where do you, you might have to go to another source to find it. Right. You know why they Yes, do? yes, because it's very important for us to remember. You started saying that, Howard. Do you want to finish it? It's God's house. It's God's house. 
Okay. Well, it's like, whoa, whoa. The purpose of God's house is to have a place to connect to God in. If God doesn't give us exact direction of how to build that, we won't know how on our own. The other stuff, we needed exact direction also. But that we're going to have to go to someone because we, you can't be a religion that's based on books. Because Judaism is not about the letter of the law alone. It has to be based on a relationship. It has to be based on, on values and morals and ethics. And that comes with having a relationship with, with the teacher. It's very important to have that link between a teacher and a student. Okay? So we mentioned previously about the importance of the ark. Of the ark. Um, no, sorry, not the ark. Of the altar. Right? The altar had a ramp. I mean, we said this example when we started the Musa master class. What is the idea of the ramp? The, the idea of the ramp is that it is signifying constant growth. Constant growth. You see, you can't stay stagnant on a ramp. You're either moving up or you're moving down. You're either moving up or you're moving down. That's the first lesson. The second lesson is that it's, there's no pre-engineered growth in Judaism. With a staircase, it's pre-engineered. Yeah. The engineer decides it's going to be six and a half inches between each step, and it's six and a half inches between each, side, each step. It doesn't make a difference if you're 95 years old and you can't lift your legs six and a half inches, or if you are a little ba two-year-old baby and you can't lift your leg six and a half inches. It doesn't make a difference. It's also for privacy. Of the also for the privacy yeah. of the kind adult. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. They shouldn't be it shouldn't be revealing it to the floor of the temple, to the floor. Yeah. To the floor. I mean, what's the big deal? No, there, were no, there were no people below. There wasn't like some type of screen that they were, you know. There, yeah, wasn't, it wasn't there was no, there wasn't. Right? So so what, what's the idea? The idea is that mo modesty has nothing to do with other people seeing. When a person is in their home all alone, there's nobody else there. They still have to be modest. Why? For myself. For my for for, for who I am. So, okay, there were a couple of things, though, that I wanted to bring out over here. So the menorah, for example, the menorah was made out of miksha zahav. What's miksha zahav? Oh. One piece of gold. Yeah. One piece. It was not a, you, what the, you know, what we do today, when you buy a piece of silver, I have a beautiful silver menorah that my wife bought me when we got married. Beautiful silver menorah. Love it. I love that menorah. That menorah is not made out of one piece of silver. Okay. That menorah is made, you know, they make first the, the centerpiece and then they make the hands and then they attach them all beautifully. They solder them. They coat it with more silver, right? Whatever they do, they make the feet so that it. No, 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 no. Not, not, the, not the menorah in the temple. The menorah in the temple needed to be one piece of pure solid gold because we said it's, it's symbolic of the universe. The menorah is symbolic of the Jewish people. The Jewish people can't be different parts and different pieces that we're going to fuse together. No, we're all one piece. We're all part of one solid gold. Chisel away the other parts. But it itself is one solid piece of gold. And that's, I think, a very, very important uh, idea. Also, there's another thing. We also have uh, the ark. What happened with the ark? Anybody know with the size of the ark? Oh, what happened? By three, by... No, it, it was it, well. It was a square. Yeah. It was a square, but it also had the poles. So yeah. let let me. I'll, I'll do. I'll, um, yeah. I'm going to do something here. Hoops that the poles went into. Hoops that the poles went into. So this was the size of the room. Poles, I think, were actually larger than the room, weren't they? You stuck out. That's correct. Yeah. You mean they stuck out beyond? Yeah, they stuck out yeah, beyond the room. That's how they... Beyond the room? Beyond the room, yeah. Oh, because they, they poked out. Poked they out. poked out of the of the curtain. It was a curtain, oh, so it poked out. Yeah. God willing, in the new book that we'll have here, hopefully next week, already we'll see. Okay, so this was, and over here you had. The the uh, I don't know how to do wings. How do I do wings? 
Okay. Well, and the chair and, and okay. that piece was also one piece of gold too, wasn't it? Yeah. With the chairs, the, the cover. Okay, this is my beautiful artistry. Everyone okay. see that? Ooh, yeah. to all of our friends here. It looks beautiful. It looks like you're there, right? Yeah, that's how good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 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 here's the amazing thing. Here's the amazing thing. So let's say that the size of the arc was two by two. So how much room would be left from each side of the arc to the wall? How much how much room? Where are our mathematicians? Four left on each side, right? Okay, so, so we started with 10. See, it's 10. Each, 10 by 10. 10 by 10. This is 2 by 2. So how much would be on the side of it? Four left. 4, 4, 2, right? But when they took the measurements, it was actually 5. 5 and 5? 5 and 5. It was 5 and 5. They took a measurement, and then they took a measurement of the whole room. It was 10. And then they took a measurement of the arc. It was 2. And then they took a what, What's going on? Our sages tell us a very important thing. The arc represents humility. Someone who's humble doesn't take space. When you have someone who's arrogant, they take all the space in the room. There's no room for anybody else. It's all about me. When you have someone who's humble, they take no space. And you take the measurement and it's like it's not, not even here. It's like not even there. And that was the, the symbolism our sages tell us, that this was a miracle that happened in the ark. It didn't fit the laws of nature. It didn't fit. Just like the miracle that all the people gathered in the courtyard. Right. And there wasn't yeah. enough space for right. half of them. Yeah. And there was enough space. That's yeah. correct. So what happened indeed in the courtyard was that it says that it says that in the courtyard, the it was like the land, the, the, it's like the, it says Eretz Katzvi, land like the deer. What is Eretz Katzvi? A deer, it's hide. If once you take the hide off the deer, you can never put that hide back on. It's an amazing, an amazing, it's like, uh, right, it's like, it, it wasn't, it was it doesn't expand. Only from within, it keeps growing. Once you take it off, it doesn't, it doesn't, it can't, can't get it back on. Yeah. Our sages tell us that the, the courtyard of the temple was like the, like the height of a deer. That when the Jewish people were there, so they would stand, you know, you know how crowded it was? Imagine, yeah. I, I was, okay, I'm going to turn this off in a minute and I'll tell you. Okay. Cause, <laughs> yeah, because we're almost finished. We're almost finished. So I'm gonna, my dear friends, have a great Shabbos. Thank you so much for joining us.